Thanks for listening to FYI Stillwater, where you will hear information about your local government you didn't know you need to know straight from the source. Be sure to check out other news and information from the city of Stillwater at stillwater.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, I'm your host, Sherry Fletcher, Director of Marketing and Civic Engagement. Today, my co-host is Assistant City Manager Paula Dennison. Hey, Paula. What's up, Sherry? Well, as we were talking, uh, start of the school year, new, different yep. distance learning. Yes. Uh, just kind of crazy times for me. I don't know about you. It's not for me because mine is working on her master's degree two states away. Yeah, well, I've got one of those, too. Um, but she still, still calls, calls you. That still calls me to take care of, <laughs> of domestic things. Like, how am I supposed to fix the drain from Oklahoma when she's in Tempe? Uh, well, it, you just have to be so intuitive to what her needs are, yeah. and you've already got it solved. You're yeah. a problem solver anyway. I am a problem solver. My advice was be an adult and take care of it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that was my yesterday. But today... Let's move into our FYI uh, podcast, and our guest is Greg Adams, uh, Transportation and Drainage Manager, and he's a first-time guest. Welcome, Greg. Yeah, thank you. Yay, Greg. All right. Well, um, Paula, can you tell us some basic facts about what uh, Greg brings to the city of Stillwater? Sure. So as the Transportation and Drainage Manager, um, Greg is in charge of the city's primary projects for transportation expansion or enhancement right um, and then overseeing any of the drainage complaints and projects and whatnot that we have uh, from and there's the a drainage lot of those. standpoint and there is a lot you know mm-hmm. if you look at last year the flooding we had right. it really revealed a lot of issues because it was such a large amount volume of water it was in such a short period of time yeah. and then it kept coming from oh, yeah. other areas outside the city so yeah so Greg's got uh, a great responsibility here with the city but one of the Um, things that is really impressive and we've been able to get so much done during the COVID time uh, with other things not as active around town is our pavement management program and that is where we identify maintenance strategies for the streets that are in existing right whether it's Preventive maintenance, rehab, reconstruction, or deferred maintenance, we have condition assessment for the streets and then uh, what their needs are Mm -hmm. for that type of pavement management uh, to help extend their life instead of just going in and ripping up every single street all the way down to the dirt and rebuilding it because that's overly expensive. So Greg's going to walk us through the program and how it affects uh, Stillwater Streets. Yes. All right. So, Greg, um, you told me that you've listened to a podcast, so you know what's going next. Sure. We're going to begin with the lightning round, and we're going to ask you some random but revealing questions. Okay, sure. Are you ready? Sure. He's ready. All okay. right, Paula. Well, I get I get the pleasure of asking these, and usually, since this is your first time on a podcast, gonna easy on I'm going to be very kind to you, <laughs> because usually I make up my own questions that she you've does. never seen before. Yeah, we, we sort of say, yeah, here's some questions to choose from, but Paula goes off script every oh, time. Oh, yeah, totally. So I'll be nice to you, but you remember right. that for the next time. Okay. Because it good. will not be that way. Okay, out of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, which decade do you love the most and why? Hmm. Well, um, that's a fine question. That's assuming I was alive in the 60s, right? Yes. Yeah, I I was. You can still remember the 60s and not have been there. And Well, you can be alive and not remember the 60s. That's true. The 60s are great. Yeah. Well, as as you progress, I, I gained in the need to be responsible so when you're younger you don't have as much responsibility so probably was better as it went further back but uh-huh. yeah no it's um all, all of them were good I don't know I, I can't pick one I I, I oh, enjoyed no, them that's all kind of, that's kind of cheating <laughs> okay so let's let's go with did you have a mullet have you had a mullet Mm-mm. no so, okay so that's not going to be that did like, you wear kick- platform shoes Nope. Bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. Yep. Designed some my, yeah. myself. Tough nut bell bottoms. 
Um, Maybe. I don't remember those. Uh-huh. Did your jeans have embroidered patches on them to cover all the holes and the rips? That's today real fashionable, by the way. Uh, I don't remember those. No. Nope. Oh, my. <clears throat> nope. Did you ride an inchworm? <laughs> <laughs> I might have done that, yes. I remember them anyway. <laughs> so are you pre uh, uh Mobile phones. Sure. Yeah. Okay, landlines. Yeah, well, and we had landlines. Party yeah. lines. Uh, Did no, you go back that, to party lines? Wasn't that old? <laughs> Didn't no. have the party lines. No. Nope. Okay, what was mm-hmm. your favorite TV show? Oh, That'll boy. tell us everything. Oh boy. Um, favorite TV show of Little all time? House on the Prairie or Okay, we're Gilligan's talking seventies. Yeah, we're talking seventies. <laughs> yeah, seventies. Yeah, yeah. So you watch Gilligan Island in reruns after school? Yeah, probably did. Probably, yes. yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. like what kids watch today when they get home from school, though. Yep. Yep. It's, there's no longer time frames. You can watch whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is. Okay, one more. What is your absolute dream job? Hmm. And your boss is in here. <laughs> Uh, no, boy, no pressure. No that's pressure. a fine question. Um, boy, I can think of a lot of things I enjoy doing. I, I like working with children. I don't know. I like uh, disadvantaged children, uh, mm-hmm. like overseas or something. Yeah. That would be like Costa Rica, maybe. Work uh-huh. with children like in, in nice Costa Rica oh, nice. or something. Especially when there's know. nice beaches there. That <laughs> right. wouldn't hurt. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, I, could do, I could go into charity work with a nice beach. You are yeah. a beach person. I am. I Yeah, kind of a beach yeah. bum here. Yeah. So, uh, and I didn't get to go this year. All right. Well, let's jump into your real job. Sure. So, pavement management. Uh, so, the city's had a pavement management program for about five, six years. Longer, longer than, than that. that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so, um, can you just tell us what is pavement management and what is your role in it? Okay. So, pavement management is like managing any asset. Our pavements are an asset to the city and it's our department's job to, to manage that and manage the condition of it and optimize the condition of it based on our available funding. And so it's it's really like any other asset. I mean, you spend money to improve, to maintain, like a, like a fleet of vehicles maybe. You, had a, you have some that are in very bad shape and, and should I rebuild the engine if it gets that bad of shape or should I just buy a new one? Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of equates to our some of our very bad streets. Do we try to do something to improve them, or is it time to just start over? And, of course, starting over is, is expensive. So yeah, it's more expensive. We try to avoid that. So we, we start with the better condition streets, and we try to maintain those to last as long as we can. So sometimes you'll so people will say, well, where are you spending money on this street when this street over here is way worse? Well, we use a wide variety of, of techniques to keep the condition of the streets in as good as possible. So we maintain the good ones with little treatments as we go, so they'll last longer so we don't have to replace them. It's yeah, much more cost-effective. I've learned new words. Okay. Mill and overlay, crack and seal. Mm-hmm. Diamond, grind. diamond grind. Diamond mm-hmm. grind. So mm-hmm. I've learned some things. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, so there's different techniques to take care of roads to expand their life. Right. So like the, the crack and fills is to seal off the moisture uh, primarily. You get moisture down the subgrade and it starts softening the subgrade. And then, then you start getting big failures when you get moisture in your, in your subgrade. So crack and fill is a, is a very effective. So that just keeps the water out. Mainly, yeah, primarily, yes. And diamond grinding, as, as Paula mentioned, is, is uh, kind of a technique for uh, concrete streets. We, we also seal the cracks as part of that, but we're getting ready to do our first one. Uh, that I'm aware of anyway, um, uh, down on South Main and 32nd Avenue and a little bit on, on Western, uh, starting next week even. So that's where we'll, we'll patch bad areas and then we'll, we'll just take a, a grinder and, and smooth the pavement off and it'll, it'll ride pretty close to new. And, wow. Uh, we'll and this is new. new. It's a new technique. It's new to the city. New it's not new water. to the industry. It's more used out on interstates and highways and so forth. Right. I, I, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. It's all around. It's out on the turnpike right now. There's a company out on the turnpike. They've done quite a bit down in Oklahoma city and, and, uh, we plan it. We're already planning our next project for next year for that one. So recently, anybody driving around town can see that there's a number of projects going on. Some of them are pretty big, like the overlay on Main Street. Mm -hmm. That was very, it got lots of attention um, because of how visual it was. Uh, Another one, something as simple as the intersection at Maine and McElroy, that work, primarily working on Waterline also, and then the street work. And then the ADA truncated domes, the handicap ramps at 
Maine, and Hall of Fame. So there's a lot of different type. Those are three really different types of work. Talk a little bit about those types of work okay. and how it's determined what type to apply. Sure. So the mill and overlays are, are very common for a pavement that's, oh, it's got a lot of oxidation where, where, where the surface is, is deteriorating and there's quite a few cracks but the pavement as a whole is still structurally sound. You want to preserve that surface and seal off those cracks. Those cracks will re reflect back through it, so don't be disappointed in the smell and overlay if you see cracks in a, in a couple of years. It should take a little while, but you'll see the cracks again, but it still seals those off and minimizes those cracks. So you do that on a street that's still structurally sound, but just needs a new riding surface. And Maine was a prime candidate right. for that. It was riding rough, people were concerned. I mean, there's others and we've others planned, but that Main Street was a perfect example of what a mill and overlay is good for and it's right like riding on a cloud now it is it yeah, is the, it the, very the white good. lines are so beautiful <laughs> uh -huh. yeah yeah, we, we pay a lot of attention to the striping because that's, I did. Uh, that's I the noticed. last thing people see. And if that's mm -hmm. bad, then... Right. But, but yeah, it does. It's all like, turned out I've good. got a new driver. I, my son's 15, and he's been driving. And um, before, we turned on one road, and he's like, oh, my God, I can't see the line. Where's It's mm -hmm. like, you know where it's supposed to be, but it wasn't there. And then we drove down Maine, and he goes, oh, this is so much easier. Yeah. It's like you're driving exactly the same way, but it does make it... it it, you know, it helped him out so much. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun, new driver is fun. It's fun. <laughs> that, that is fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Distance learning and new driving. Oh, my God. <laughs> a year for you, Sherry. <laughs> In a pandemic. <laughs> In a pandemic. <laughs> uh, life's rough. So then that uh, intersection project at McElroy, Maine, is, is also new to the city. It's not new to the industry, but mm -hmm. um, it's a concrete overlay over asphalt. So we milled off five inches of asphalt and put, came back with concrete. And the advantage of that is in an intersection setting is that you have a lot of start and stop. And so there's a lot of rutting. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of shoved asphalt and it rides rough. When you're going across the other way, it rides rough. And, and so it's, it's difficult to get asphalt not to do that in those situations. So you come in, in those situations, we could have just done a mill and overlay. It would have been cheaper, but it wouldn't have lasted near as long. This will last 15-plus years before so, we so ever have to touch the, it. So it's the, got nice. the concrete, and then there's the asphalt stays there, and then you put concrete over the asphalt? That's right. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah, so it works so as a layered. base. So it's layered. Yeah. Yeah, it works as a base. You have to have a, uh, I can't remember exactly, mm -hmm. depending yeah. on your situation, but you've got to have a pretty good solid uh, layer of asphalt, mm -hmm. good asphalt yeah. underneath. So, so it makes it... I guess kind of cushy. Well, it just gives it a strong base. Yeah. It really, you, you, it's it's very strong, and it's it, it'll still yeah. hold the weight of the traffic. You know, uh -huh. you saw how we milled it, and then we had, well, we didn't actually have traffic in this case. Sometimes we have traffic yeah. on the milled surface, but we didn't this time. But you can, huh. and it'll still hold it through the construction. But, yeah, that's a great improvement. Yeah, it is, and it looks three times as large. Mm -hmm. As it did before, <laughs> before the work was done. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the white of the concrete, I don't know, but you're or right, what it, it does. Is. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, because a lot of people are like, "What are you guys doing over there? Why are you taking so long?" Uh, but but we moved water lines as well. That's right. Yes. And so there was a there was a lot of work going on. So what's the advantage of moving water lines? Why would we do that? Well, in this particular case, we didn't really move any. We just replaced them okay. so that. We wouldn't do all this work on the surface that's going to last 15 years and then have to cut out a, have a water patch lake. for a water yeah. lake. Yeah. So we mainly, in this case, we did that. In other cases, you want to take that opportunity while you've got it all torn out, just like on 4th and Hester, we're getting ready to start that. We've moved them, you know, so it makes more sense that out, out from underneath the pavement, things like that. So even if in years to come, it does start causing a leak or something, you don't have to tear up the street to, to fix right, it. That makes so, a lot of sense. Let's talk a little bit about where does this money come from? So the pavement... Because it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of money. Uh, did I hear right that one lane miles, if you start from scratch and you rebuild the whole thing, it's like a million dollars for yes. one lane mile. Yeah. So rebuilding roads is really expensive. Yes, it is. So where does the money come from, and how much money are we spending on the roads? Well, we just approved the 2020 plan for the projects for that. I think they gave us $4.6 for and, the whole. And where does that money come from, Paula? So we have general fund money, but we also have the sales tax, the street tax. So it's uh, a half cent. It's a half cent sales tax that is collected if you buy anything inside mm -hmm. the city limits of Stillwater. And that goes directly to the transportation fund for pavement management. And that's about $4.5 a year. 
that's dedicated just for the pavement management. But you said something about the general fund. So if, if we spend oh, anything more than the 4.5 million, that comes out of the, the regular money that we have, the general There's, money. Right. We also have some capital projects that mm -hmm. are not funded by the half cent mm -hmm. street sales yeah. tax. Um, so those capital transportation projects are going to come out of the general fund, mm -hmm. but sometimes there is additional money needed mm -hmm. for the pavement management projects that do get approved through council. And like Greg said, we just took uh, the fiscal year 20 for all of those approvals, um, and they, they're approved in an open public meeting so that mm -hmm. folks know yeah. what we're going to be doing and the type of pavement management mm -hmm. we're going to be doing on uh, certain streets around mm -hmm. town. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's those two pots of money, but the primary, of course, mm -hmm. is that half cent street tax. So whenever she says that, you know, we're going to evaluate the, the streets and spend the money, how do we know which streets to do what technique to? Well, that's a fine question. We, um, we hire a company every five years to come in and, and digitally assess our network. And they do it digitally or electronically with their mobile equipment, which is much more accurate than when I first started my career. We would go out with clipboards and, and estimate a, like poke a, a the road. patch <laughs> and, and how many cracks. And, and from that, we'd have a formula and come up with a, a ranking, and then we'd rank all the streets. Well, they do, they do that all more automated now yeah. and okay. less uh, human so they drive every road, and they look at, at the condition of it. Yep. So then they rank the streets uh, according to a, a, a pavement condition index. They, they give every section of street a, a, an index from ranking from 0 to 100. And then from that, we choose techniques like the mill and overlay would be in the 50 to 60 pavement condition range. And when it gets down to like 30 or 40, then we completely reconstruct it. Some in the 70s will do a, a slurry seal or a crack seal or something. So we use that assessment that this company does to help us determine which streets to do. That's awesome. It's very scientific and uh, it takes some guesswork out of it. It does, but you made a good point earlier, Sherry, when, um, or Greg did, one of y'all, when we were talking about the roads and why are you doing this to a seemingly good road 19th, when you have 19th really was an bad example. ones? Because we did have a lot of people ask, I think it was last year, the year before, we uh, mill and overlaid 19th, which is a fairly newly constructed road. It still looked great. And so people were asking why did that get more attention, but it was to extend the life of it. It is. Um, you kind of uh, relate it to if you exercise or you take vitamins for your health, that's a lot better than waiting until something catastrophic happens and then you've got yeah. to have a major surgery. Right. So you're, you're doing that surface or that preventative maintenance, um, and that way it can last longer while you're building up the funds to do the really bad roads. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think a lot of people, I mean, the roads are things that people, they see, they feel, they uh, it, it's a big part of their lives. Yeah, quality so, of, yeah. quality of life issue. It Absolutely. Really is. mm -hmm. um, and so, whenever the roads are being uh, looked at, you're also looking at uh, is it the right number of lanes and stuff? Because we redid uh, Duck, Street. Duck Street. Right, from um, 12th to 6th. Yeah, so <laughs> it went from four lanes to, to three, three with bike lanes. With bike mm -hmm. lanes. So there were some people kind of questioning why is that a good choice? What would you say to those people? Well, we, um, you know, we've had people that would like bike, bike lanes everywhere. Yeah. And it just doesn't fit everywhere. Um, Sixth Street, it would, you, you just have too much traffic. You, you need all four lanes. But that section from on Duck from 6th to, uh, from 12th to 6th, was just one that, that we felt like the, the capacity was there to handle in one lane each direction, and the turn lane would help. And there was some connectivity off of 19, mm -hmm. well, tw 12th. yeah, because yeah, uh -huh. it comes right. up from 19th to Western to 12th mm -hmm. to Duck, so right. you yes. could get from the south uh, west side of town to campus. Right. Uh, so this actually improved their, uh, their, their experience. 
yeah, and you, you do. don't really notice that the lane is missing because the turn lanes actually are more safe. Yeah. They are, and it, we've had a lot of positive comments yeah. about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big adjustment right, for that stretch of Duck Street, um, you know, especially coming off 6th and 212 because that is a highly traveled mm -hmm. section of road right. there. Uh, but we've had a lot of positive comments about it. And some of the other stuff that transportation looks at is is there a storm sewer in the area? Has there been street flooding? So when mm -hmm. they're redoing the street, or is this a drainage project that they yeah. need to start focusing on? Um, sidewalks, multimodal. There's a lot of analysis and evaluation that goes into each one of these projects that I don't think everybody fully recognizes right. um, how many things and each project, it's not a, oh, we've got the money, now let's get a contractor tomorrow and let's go out and start working on it Monday. That's for sure. It's a multi-year yeah. project each and every one of them can end up being. So, obviously, we have a lot more to talk about. We didn't even get into your drainage work. So, <laughs> if um, <laughs> you're like, oh, that's great. So, um, so, if we invite you back, can we talk drainage? Sure. And I'll, I'll pick sure. the questions then. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when Paula's here, it's all Sounds no good. rules. There's no rules. Okay, well, thank you so much yeah, for being our you. guest today and kind of getting us caught up on pavement management and what's yeah. going on this summer. Yeah, that's thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for your work. You bet. So, Paula, let's head to the mailbox. Every week we get questions, and this week we got a question from Larry, and this is from Twitter. And so he asked about, he was wanting some of those free level two electric vehicle car chargers, and why can't we get some? We actually, surprise, surprise, have these EV charging stations in Stillwater. We've got uh, Strickland Park has a station, Boomer Lake has two stations, and there's also two stations at the public library. So they're downtown, and they're midtown at Strickland mm -hmm. Park, and then they're on the north side of town at Boomer Lake. So you just pull up? charge your car and you go for a walk or enjoy downtown or whatever you, it is you need to do yes it's not going to be like filling up your tank of gas and you're done in a minute and 33 right. seconds it does take time to mm -hmm. charge your vehicle uh, at those stations but we actually have a video on mm -hmm. the city's website that you can go to and it demonstrates how you uh, find and charge your vehicle on these electric vehicle charging yeah, stations. Yeah, there's some good information on that. A lot of on, good information. And uh, we, we do ask that you shop local while your vehicle is you charging. Bet. Enjoy the park. Uh, go to the library. Check out a book. Yeah, and you know what? Right now, it's a little warm out there today, yeah. but this week has been very nice. So Especially for August. Go charge your vehicle, and the first week in September, when it rolls around next week, yeah, take a stroll around downtown. You may come across something you didn't know we had. Absolutely. Awesome. So let's go to question number two, and I know this one's from Facebook. Why are the school zones being forced on us this week? Because public school is going to distance learning. Why do we need uh, the school lights? So we um, got word from the Stillwater Public Schools Ast Assistant Superintendent, Dana Renner, and she says that even in times of distance learning, the public schools is running about 12 buses daily. They run those for the special ed students across the district, and they still have some extracurricular activities that they need to bus the, mm. the students so back still, and forth. So there's still activity. So it's activity. still operating. Yeah, yeah, there's stuff going on at the schools. Yeah, it sure is. Um, and, and it's a good reminder for mm. everybody this is school time. Yeah. So obey the school laws mm -hmm. uh, and be sure that when those buses are running uh, that you are aware and you are following the regulations that are in place for the safety of yourself and the school buses mm -hmm. and the children. Yeah. 
All right, Paula, that is good information. Thank you for being my co-host today. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. All and right. it was good to hear what Greg had to say. I know. About He's the got streets. so much uh, information. So mm-hmm. we bring him back and he'll talk he'll walk us through drainage because you're right, we had the floods last year. Yes. So we did. a lot of new information there. Yes, there is. Thanks for listening to FYI Stillwater. If you like this episode, help us out and give us a like or share us with your friends. Stay tuned for our next podcast. If you have a question for City Hall, email news at stillwater.org, and in the next podcast, we'll answer a few of them. FYI Stillwater is available on our website at stillwater.org, Spotify, and just about anywhere else you enjoy your podcast.